a long time coming. The 87 Saints. A special look at the evolution of New Orleans' first playoff team. Brought to you by your Louisiana Nissan dealers. Monique Mufflers. Benson Automotive World. And by your local Hyundai dealers. Now your hosts, Ro Brown and Ed Daniels. Good evening, I'm Ro Brown and welcome to what was a long time coming, the 87 Saints. In the next half hour, we'll review what happened, why it happened, and look back into the early years of the franchise. The only time the Saints were really fun, that's up until now. You know, in any success story, there are highs and lows. That's life. The 87 Saints season was full of ups and downs. Fortunately, there were more good times than bad for a change. However, there will forever be at least six points of the season etched in the minds of all red-blooded Houdats. The surprise season began with a surprise. A 28-21 victory over defending AFC Central champion Cleveland keyed by the defense with two back-breaking safeties. <laughs> After a loss to the Eagles, the players found themselves suspended in a bad dream. It was called the NFL player strike, and nobody won, or so we thought. The Saints' replacement team was one of the league's best. The shining star, local boy John Forcade, whose 82-yard touchdown pass to Mike Waters set a club record against the Rams. 37-10, Saints' replacements over the Rams' replacements. They would go 2-1 during the strike. The Saints stood at 3-2 overall. But they didn't stay on strike. And when the team returned October 25th against San Francisco, Morton Anderson's 52-yard field goal attempt late in the game fell just short. The Saints came up two points short. Jim Morris' fuse even shorter. Could have, would have, should have is the difference of what I'm talking about. The good teams don't come in and say could have. They get it done. All right, it's that simple. I'm tired of saying could have, should have, would have. Little did we know it would be the last defeat of the year. Three weeks later, it was on to San Francisco. The special team sparkled. The Saints were good enough. No coulda, shoulda, woulda, they didn't. Morton Anderson won it with a field goal in the final two minutes. 26-24 Saints. November 29th, the Saints went to Pittsburgh at 7-3 with a four-game winning streak. Thanks to the goal line stand. They got the monkey off their backs, assuring themselves of a winning season for the first time in the team's history. God, excuse me, man. This has yeah. been a long time. One week later, Mardi Gras in December, 44-34 over Tampa Bay. The Saints are playoff bound, and their coach admits it. Yeah, you bet we are. You bet we are. When you get there, you are a playoff team, and the New Orleans Saints, 1987, are a playoff team. With all due respect to this man, we'll be back with a look at the real boss of this football team. That's coming up after this. There's a void, like Merlin Olsen for years never got in the playoffs, but uh, I'm happy for him. A lot of guys have animosity or jealousy of him. I'm, I'm tickled to death for him. The general manager of the Calgary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League had a fight with one of the players. The youngest member of the coaching staff was a 30-year-old named Jim Finks. As the junior member of the staff, he was told, you're the general manager. He has been one of the outstanding executives in pro football ever since. So, Jim, you, welcome on board. Thank you. Pardon? Thank you, thank you. January 14, 1986, the day Saints owner Tom Benson hired Jim Finks as president and general manager. Finally, a man with a track record for success. Be Before his hair turned gray, he made a perennial contender of the Minnesota Vikings of the 1960s. He laid the foundation for the Chicago Bears, first world title in 22 years. His last job in sports, before working for a public relations firm, was with the Chicago Cubs baseball club during that team's successful 1984 campaign. 
He thought he'd had enough of sports, but he was wrong. I found out the complete year that I was out, I, I should get back in because I was too young not to do anything. And uh, uh, I thank God for giving me this opportunity because uh, it's been a very rewarding year and a half for almost two years now. And, uh, and uh, my wife uh, understands uh, why I had to get back in. Uh, and, uh, just itchy? Uh, <laughs> you just yeah, missed it? <laughs> yeah, I just missed it. It's something that I, I feel comfortable doing. I've done virtually all my life, and I think I have reasonable credentials and skills in doing it. The collection of baseball caps in his Saints Drive office tells the depth of the man. From a Pro Bowl quarterback with the Steelers to coaching and front office positions in the Canadian Football League to his present job with the Saints. His management style? hands-on. I think I can cope with the pressure on a day-to-day -day basis and I think that's important for anybody in this role because you have highs and lows and then you're on the middle ground and I think you have to be pretty consistent. I can't afford the luxury of becoming too emotional even though I might be churning uh, in my stomach I can't afford the luxury of letting people know that I'm not in control because I, I think that's important. We call Joe to find out how he... To work in the NFL is great. To work for a guy like Jim Finks is just, it's, it's the epitome. It's working for the best possible uh, GM in the, in the National Football League. Um, there hasn't been a day that's gone by since I've been here where I haven't picked up a little uh, different way to do something or just from his experience. His experience as a player has been helpful. However, his reputation with some of the players is tight with the purse strings. I try to pay our players on their contribution and their value to the New Orleans Saints, and if the Giants want to do something with their players, that's their prerogative. I, I'm sorry to learn I have the reputation of being tight. <laughs> You've I, never heard that? Well, yes, I have, <laughs> okay. and, and uh, I have, I, 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 it doesn't disturb me, but I, I, I think it's um, not factual. It is factual that winning seems to follow Jim Finks. And while Benson boogies and pays the bills, this youngster of 60 years quietly runs the show and asks, what's next? I think I have a few battles left. You hear it in nearly every community. Our fans are the best in the country. With 20 years of faithful support, Saints fans have proof to back that up, claim up. So what's a typical who dat like? Try Yancey and Gwen Roberts, married December 5th, spent their honeymoon in the Superdome, December 6th, watching the Saints wrap up a playoff spot. It's going to be another good game. I can feel it already. It's going to be a good game already. They're not going to let us down. They're going to... What would you do with the tickets? Oh, my God. What would I do with the tickets? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> I got them. All right. Well, it's one of those kind of honeymoons where, you know, you've been waiting so long to see a winning Saints season, you can't miss it. You got to get here when they're winning. We've been in section 633 for the last two years. They're great. It's a great They're great. Yeah. Come on, Martin. Stick it in there. Bam. Yeah. yeah. The thing that gets me about the Saints now is the fact that, you know, they had a lot of good players that have gone back and forth through their hands, but it looks like they've got the management and the coaches now that are really putting it together and making a team that is producing and not a team that's making excuses. What they're doing now is just, uh, it's like watching uh, moths turn into butterflies, you know? When we return, a chat with the first Saints number one draft pick and a visit by one of his contemporaries. I certainly have great memories of uh, New Orleans, particularly with the new management, new ownership, and uh, Moore is a good friend of mine too, and I think he's doing a terrific job. 